Okay, let's get going. So welcome to today's Bridges to Webinar. Uh, and uh, welcome to the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center. Uh, I assume uh, many of you being Bridges to users are familiar with us, but uh, here's who we are. Uh, and in particular, welcome to the Bridges 2 project. Uh, this is a Bridges 2 webinar, so it's under the auspices of this NSF project that we are getting together today. And uh, my name is Sergio Stanielevich. I'm the principal investigator of the Bridges 2 project. This is our leadership team. Um, and we all welcome you and hope that you will enjoy today's webinar. Uh, we have, this is one of a series of Bridges to webinars, which we started in January of 2023. And the idea is to provide a forum for the Bridges to community to learn and share ideas and achievements. We have a link there to the, uh, uh, kind of more general uh, collection of webinars that have happened. Uh, so we are looking for topics and speakers of interest uh, to work that is being done or that may be done in future on Bridges 2. And so we would very much like you to suggest future speakers, including yourselves or from your own team and, and all topics that you might want to hear about and again, you know, if you want to talk yourself, that would be that would be fantastic. So just contact me and we'll make it happen or we'll talk about it. Uh, so today we have the pleasure of hearing a presentation from Dr. Mei Yu Wang. Uh, Mei Yu acquired her PhD in astrophysics from the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, her doctoral research focused on developing novel probes for studying dark matter. She did postdoctoral research in studying dark matter and the Milky Way at Texas A&M University and at Carnegie Mellon University. And uh, then she joined the uh, uh, HPC AI and Big Data Group here at BSC in 2022. Uh, in addition to working on Bridges 2, her primary roles include addressing support issues and developing tests and benchmarkings for the Neocortex project at BSC and the Open Compass project. So before we turn things over to May Yu, here are a couple of uh, logistics uh, uh, Q&A uh, and, and other statements for uh, today's webinar. So first of all, being a uh, an access uh, resource provider, we abide by the uh, uh, access code of conduct. Uh, during the presentation, all of us except me, you will be muted. And we would ask you to type your questions into the Zoom chat. There are some questions that we may be able to answer right there. And then uh, May you will finish her presentation uh, around uh, you know, uh, 50 minutes in. So hopefully we'll have a uh, final 10 minutes of the webinar to address any uh, remaining or deep uh, uh, questions. And then if there's any remaining, then Mayu has graciously agreed that, you know, uh, she can engage uh, after the webinar at this email address. So with that, are there any questions for me before I turn things over to Mayu? If not, then may you please take it away. Okay, thank you, uh, Sergio, for the uh, introduction. Uh, so let me share my screen. Okay, so can everyone see the uh, slides? Uh, okay, I assume uh, you can see the slides. Okay, so my name is May Yuan, and I'm a machine learning research scientist at the Pittsburgh Sewer Community Center. So today I'm going to talk about utilizing Bridges 2 for deep learning distributed training. 
So uh, the goal of this webinar is to help Bridges2 users to enable multi-GPU trainings to scale up deep learning trainings and achieve speed up. So for example, as a uh, figure show on the right, uh, this is an example doing data parallelism um, by running TensorFlow with Horophon framework. Uh, and this is an image um, classification task. So uh, I'm showing like the uh, amount of speed up in terms of um, the number of uh, images you can process per second, for example, compared to one GPU. So, um, and it, it shows pretty good uh, uh, scaling re relation when you increase number of GPUs. So, um, so that, that's a very uh, promising and uh, good approach to um, improve your uh, model performance. So hopefully after this webinar, uh, what you will learn uh, today is to uh, how to learn how to run deep learning jobs on Bridges2 GPU partitions. If you are not familiar with the various different ways to run or request uh, resources and also ways to set up environment, I'll give an overview of, about this uh, next. And also I will show some simple ways to enable multi-GPU trainings uh, for, for your models. So this is the outline. Uh, so first I already talk about the motivation and then uh, I'll give an overview of the Bridges2 GPU partition. Um, but I assume many of you already know um, and have been using GPU uh, on Bridges2 for quite some time, but I'll still go over some basics and give a, uh, a quick overview. And then I will um, talk about uh, some deep learning distributed framework and give some single examples of how to run it. And I'll provide uh, run script examples. Uh, and I, I actually include uh, the run script and examples in the public GitHub repo that I'll sh share uh, in a few minutes uh, so that you can test it yourself um, after the webinar. And then uh, I will talk about some examples of uh, running distributed tra training on Bridges2. For example, uh, what may affect the performance uh, and, and, and show some performance comparisons for some examples. Okay, so uh, let's go right into the uh, overview of the, uh, sorry, uh, of the Bridge to GPU partition. So, um, so you can find all the details uh, in the Bridges to user guide. So uh, I'll just um, briefly mention about it. So there are two uh, GPU node type. One is V132 and one is V160. So there are different number of nodes for different type of GPUs. And we also have one DGX2 server. And the number of GPUs per node or per server is, um, is different for different node type. And the number of memories per GPU and RAM per node are different as well. And we have two uh, GPU partitions. One is called GPU partition and one is called GPU shared. So if you want to use just part of uh, the uh, GPU resources of one GPU node, you can use the GPU share partition and usually the the uh, the location, sorry, the, the job will start to run uh, faster. And you can request up to four GPUs and the maximum runtime is 48 hours. And for GPU partitions, you have to request uh, one whole node or I mean entire nodes and you can request uh, or more than one GPU nodes, and you can request up to uh, 64 GPUs and the maximum runtime is 48 hours. So there are first way to run jobs on Bridges2 as you may already uh, familiar with um, since you're a user uh, of Bridges2, uh, but uh, please check the Bridges2 user guide for more details. For example, you can uh, submit batch jobs using Slurn script uh, to, to submit job to the queue so that they run as soon as resources are available for intensive sessions where you can type commands and receive out, uh, output back to your screen as command completes. Uh, it's best uh, for debugging and short test jobs and you can request uh, an interactive session up to four, uh, eight hours. And uh, there's also, um, a web browser uh, interface called On Demand developed by Ohio State University. Uh, this is useful if you're a Jupyter Notebook uh, user. Uh, it provides a graphic interface, uh, basically similar um, to what uh, you typically use 
when you're running Jupyter Notebook, uh, and it is uh, connected to Bridges too. I'll, I'll go to in, uh, go into more details for these individual ways to uh, to run it in in more details soon. And uh, there are various ways to set up environments for your AI ML application. For example, um, uh, you can use uh, uh, PSC prebuilt AI module, which is um, uh, is uh, an Anaconda based environment uh, that we already have a few popular AI ML or big data packages installed. For example, PyTorch, TensorFlow, um, TorchVision, et cetera that are ready to be used. So you just need to load in the modules and then you can run your application. And we also have uh, NVIDIA NGC container uh, available. Uh, they are available in the Ocean file system. So um, they are developed by NVIDIA and they are performance optimized. So you can just use it uh, for your uh, application. And of course, you can uh, use uh, you can construct your own uh, environment. For example, using um, um, using Anaconda to uh, either um, uh, create a new uh, Conda environment or uh, customize the existing AI module by adding additional packages, or you can build your own um, singularity container. So the instructions are all available in the Bridges to uh, user guide. Okay, so now I'll go into a little bit more details in terms of how to set up the environment. So, um, for example, I talk about the AI module, uh, which is uh, an account, an account based um, environment, but uh, the way to load it is similar to uh, the some uh, the the commands you use for loading uh, modules on bridges too. If you already use it, for example, for uh, Anaconda or uh, Python or um, Intel compiler, etc. So, for example, uh, you can use this command uh, module space spider space ai slash anaconda, type it, then you will list uh, various different versions of AI module that's available right now. So, for example, uh, you can see there's a version, uh, there are a few versions for TensorFlow, and there are some, there are some of them for PyTorch. So if you want to check more details, uh, type uh, model, uh, module space help space the name of the AI module to see uh, details of individual AI modules. And if you want to load uh, one of the modules, uh, just use the module load uh, and then the space, uh, sorry, the name of the, um, the AI module, then you will load in the module. Um, to see what's inside uh, the uh, environment, for example, the list of packages that uh, that was installed. Uh, once you load in a module, type conda space list uh, to print that out. And you can also uh, customize the AI module by adding additional package to the environment. Uh, it is done in a way similar to uh, to how you create a new. Uh, a conda environment. So you, you basically clone the uh, existing AI module and then uh, create a new one uh, of your own and then you can customize it. Uh, and then we also have the N NVIDIA NGC container that's available. So it's located in slash ocean slash container slash NGC. Um, so there are various different uh, applications that has uh, NGC containers. So please uh, check uh, what's available there. Um, so uh, here I'm showing an example uh, of using a NGC PyTorch container to run a, a PyTorch script um, in an uh, interactive session. So for example, once the interaction interactive session started, um, you can uh, use either singularity shell command to start a in interactive uh, sorry to start singularity shell, and then it will be prompt uh, into a command line like this, starting with singularity, and then you can type in your command, for example, Python three space uh, the name of your script, or you can use singularity space esec to run your command like this. So. Um, so I want to uh, mention that uh, you, you have to remember to add the flag dash dash MV to enable GPU support. Uh, otherwise, um, your 
uh, application won't be able to detect uh, GPUs in the system. So this is important. Um, so if you want to check what is uh, what kind of packages are installed in the container, you can start a singularity shell and then type uh, pip space freeze to check what what packages are uh, are installed. Um, okay, so those are some simple ways to uh, set up the environment. And then I'll talk about ways to run uh, deep learning jobs on Bridges 2. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, there are uh, three ways to do it. So one is uh, using interactive session. So here are the basic commands for starting interactive sessions. So, um, so uh, you can either uh, request uh, resources from the GPU share partition or GPU partition. Um, the commands are pretty similar, but for GPU uh, partition, you need to specify the number of nodes. Um, so the rules of, uh, of those comments uh, are as following. For example, you, you specify the com com sorry, partition uh, using the dash dash partition flag and then use the dash dash grass uh, flag to specify uh, the node type. Uh, for example, it can be V100-32 or V100-60 or if you don't want to specify the node type, just use V100. And um, and the end here is uh, the number of GPUs per node. So for a GPU partition, it should be either eight or if you want to use DGX2, it should be 60. So for GPU share partition, the end should be less than four. And uh, again, for to specify the number of nodes for the GPU partition, use either dash n or dash dash nodes. And you can always check uh, the bridges to user guide for more details. So um, this is uh, shown uh, a few slides ago, but uh, this is what it may look like uh, when you run an interactive session. So this is an example come in uh, requesting one GPU uh, in the GPU share partition. So you would, once you type that in, you will generate a bunch of outputs and you may st stay in this line for some time as it is waiting for the resources to become available. So once it's available, you will uh, keep going and start the session. So you will see uh, what, uh, what nodes uh, has been assigned to your job. And then you can, for example, use uh, singular containers, as I mentioned before, to run your job like this. Or you can, um, use AI modules uh, to run your job as well. So for example, once the uh, interactive session started, you uh, use module space load, uh, space uh, the name of the AI modules to load in the environment, and you will generate a bunch of output and keep going. So, um, and then you will see that your command line will start with something like this. So that indicates the environment is now activated. So it's similar to what you will see if you activate a conda environment. So, and then you are ready to uh, run your uh, command, for example, Python space, uh, the name of your script. Okay, uh, next I'll talk about uh, batch mode. So um, you will use a Slurn script to submit uh, uh, your uh, submit job. So this is an example a Sloan script. So you just generate that as a text file. Sorry. So um so in the in the header you uh, specify a bunch of uh th this is uh, the command to specify um the resources, for example, partition, number of nodes, the runtime, and you use this flag dash dash GPU S, which is slightly different than the interactive session. Uh, to specify um, the node type and the number of uh, GPU uh, in your job. But here, this N here uh, actually stands for the total number of GPUs. So if you have two uh, nodes, it, it, the number uh, should be 60, for example. So uh, this is uh, showing an example using um, AI module to run the application. So um, first you move to the working directory of your script and then you load a 
module and then and where you execute the commands. Um, to submit a Slurm script like this, you, you just type sbatch the name of your script, uh, but you can check more uh, details such as other sbatch commands and options in the Bridges to User Guide. And again, uh, an example scripts for using NGC container, very similar, but uh, this is, uh, you can use singularity space exec to uh, execute the command. Okay, uh, next I'll talk about on-demand, which is uh, useful if you're a Jupyter Notebook user. So, um, so to do to do so, uh, you uh, open this uh, website using a web browser, and then you you will be prompted to enter your PSC username and password, and then you will once you enter, you will be you will be directed to a web page like this. So on the top, you click on the tab interactive apps, and then then there's an option for selecting Jupyter Notebook. So click on it, you will be directed to a uh, a web page like this. So that's where you specify uh, the information about your job in, in a way uh, it's similar to a typical batch job. So for example, you specify the number of hours, number of nodes, your allocation accounts, um, which partition. So it can be GPU, GPU share. Uh, if you want to run it on regular memory uh, or CPU, that's also possible. but. Um, but yeah, and then you use this column extra slurn arcs to specify the num uh, the type of nodes and the number of GPUs. So uh, it, it the 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 rule is very similar to a typical batch job. Uh, then once that's ready, you just click on launch to submit the job. So you will be directed to a page like this. So um. So uh, it may show something like the job. Um, you need to wait for the job to start. Once it's uh, the, once it's started, you will see this um, button. Click to say connect to Jupyter. Then once you connect it, you will launch the Jupyter notebook interface. Just um, very similar to what you typically will see when you're running a Jupyter notebook. Um. Then I want to mention something like uh, an easy way to set up the environment, uh, but you can check the Bridges to User Guide for uh, other ways uh, or, um, to set up the environments. But uh, you can use NGC container for um, for your Jupyter uh, notebook uh, running, on, uh, running with on, on demand. For example, once you uh, open your Jupyter notebook uh, on Bridges to using on demand, you just click on uh, this uh, tab kernel and then select change kernel. Then you will see uh, a few options, including NGC uh, PyTorch or NGC TensorFlow. Those are directed uh, pointing to the latest uh, NGC PyTorch and TensorFlow containers. So you can just uh, click on that. that. That will be loaded into your um, Jupyter notebook. Okay, um, next I'll talk, talk about, uh, uh, I'll give an overview of the deep learning distributed framework and, and showing some simple examples of how to run, run them on Bridges 2. So, so for uh, distributed training, it is a technique for training deep learning model on multiple GPUs or machine. It can significantly speed out the training process as the workload can be divided and distributed across different machines. And it can help uh, if your model is too big that can fit in the memory of a uh, single GPU. Um, and uh, distributed training can be used for any deep learning model, but it's most beneficial for large models and data sets. And there are two main types of distributed training. One is called data parallelism and model parallelism. So uh, for model parallelism, um, the data is split into smaller batches and each batch is trained on a separate GPU or machine. So for example, as illustrated in the figure here, so for example, if you are uh, running on three GPUs, uh, you can split your data into three batches. Uh, the batch, is, batch here is not the same as the batch size that um, 
that um that you, you uh that it's different uh, but uh it will be split into three uh and then each um batch is fitted uh to the for for individual GPU and each GPU is hosting hosting a replicate of the model, so you will process this um this individual batch and the gradient will be then be average and then uh the weights of the of uh, of the model will be updated synchronously. So uh there are a few uh, examples uh framework that uh that can be used for doing the parallelism. For example, for TensorFlow, uh, they, they have uh, TensorFlow that distribute that strategy API that for, uh, provide uh, several approach for doing their parallelism. And also PyTorch has different uh, tools such as uh, their parallel or distribute their parallel API. And there's also a framework called Horophone that uh, can be used for uh, running TensorFlow or PyTorch um applications and and the hugging face accelerate uh, actually utilize the PyTorch distribute uh, package uh, and provide a simpler uh, interface. Um, and then there's a uh, uh, different parallel called model parallelism. Uh, in model parallelism, the model is split into uh, smaller parts so that each part can be trained on a separate GPU. Or machine, and then um, then the parts of the model uh, will be synchronized and to ensure they are all up to date. So there are different uh, concepts, for example, pipeline or tensor parallelism, uh, and there are different ways to divide the model. For example, you can divide the model by layers and have that assigned to different GPUs. Or you can divide a model so that different GPUs are processing different tensors. And uh, there are a few different uh, framework um, and, and model parallelism can be combined with their parallelism. So um, to, uh, to, to help with uh, large uh, deep learning models. So for example, PyTorch has uh, some model and pipeline parallelism framework and and also uh, this Megatron slash LM uh, framework is developed by NVIDIA, uh, especially uh, target uh, the um, transformer style language model for doing model parallelism. And Deep Speed is a framework developed by Microsoft uh, to uh, to to do model parallelism for transformers uh, based model. And there are other approaches uh, proposed earlier, um, um, such as GPipe and pipe drain that um, provide model parallelism for uh, deep learning models. So um, next I'll talk about individual examples for different framework. So first of all, for PyTorch, um, it utilizes the torch.distributed package, and you can find more examples or documentations um in the in their website uh, it basically provides a distributed communication package built on either nccl or glue or mpi and it provides pytorch support and communication primitives for multi-process parallelism so on the left i show an example script for doing multi-parallelism using the distributed data parallel uh, api and the red boxes show the um, necessary change that you will need to apply to switch from one uh, sing single GPU training to multi-GPU training. So for example, you load those uh, uh, libraries for distributed training and distributed data parallel, and then you initialize the uh, distributed session at the beginning. Here we're using NCCL. Uh, and uh, get the rank and assign that to to model and wrap the model with the distributed data parallel uh, function, and then you will use the distributed sampler to um, divide your data uh, based on the number of uh, GPUs, and then include the sampler into the data loader. For the main training uh, loop, you need 
you don't need to do anything. The 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 API will take care of that. Uh, at the end of the uh, training session, you will need to destroy the um destroy uh, process group. Okay. Um, and for PyTorch, um, there are some very simple ways to do model parallelism. Um, for example, and, and this can be combined with uh, the data parallelism framework I just showed uh, in the previous slide. For example, you can just assign different layers in the model to different GPUs, for example. Um, but there are, are some other um, framework or examples you can check um, in the PyTorch uh, website as well. Okay, so uh, here I'm showing uh, example scripts or commands for running PyTorch uh, distribute data parallel application on Bridges2. So uh, this is uh, similar to the Sloan scripts uh, structure that uh, we've seen before. Um, you can use either a singularity container to run it or using just loading the AI module to run it. Yeah, I'm using the torch run um, function to run it and you specify the number of nodes, uh, number of processes per node and then the name of your script. Similar uh, things uh, can be applied to running uh, your, your command using in the interactive sessions. So you can use either a singular container or AI module to run the application. Um, using torch run. Okay, um, so for uh, TensorFlow, um, they also provide uh, some framework. Uh, for example, the tf.distribute.strategy API provide uh, digital training across model GPU machine or TPUs. This is mostly doing data parallelism. So, um, here I'm showing example uh, using mirror strategy uh, API and the ch changes are minimum if you're using the model.fit uh, function for your training. So just, just two lines, for example, uh, initialize the mirror strategy session and then uh, with the mirror strategy scope, uh, you construct the model and then fit the model. So for running um, a TensorFlow mirror strategy uh, script, um, uh, again, for a Sloan script, uh, you can use either a singular container like this and then just use Python 3 space, uh, the name of script to run the application, or you can use AI module or an account of environment, anything else um, that, that we would like to use. And then the command just using Python three space nano the script, and the same apply to an interactive session. Um, you can use either singular container or AI modules or conda environment. Um, so next, I'll talk about Horophon. So Horophon uh, is a distributed deep learning training framework developed by Uber. It can be applied to uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, or other uh, deep learning framework. So you can check their GitHub for uh, some examples. Uh, and also, they have their documentation, although it's not the most updated one, but it's still pretty useful. And the recommended way to run a horophone on Bridges 2, I would recommend using the container because it's not very easy to install horophone by yourself. Um, so the TensorFlow, if you want to run horophone with TensorFlow, you can use either the NGC container or the horophone container that, that those are available in the Ocean file system. And if you want to use uh, PyTorch, uh, you can use the Horvon container. Um, on the right, I'm showing a example script uh, for doing data parallelism with Horvon for a TensorFlow application. And again, the red boxes mark the changes you need to make uh, to run uh, from one uh, single GPU to multiple GPUs. So you need to... Uh, Import the horophone.tensorflow.keras uh, 
library and it then initialize the uh, session, assign um, the Horvon uh, rank to different GPU devices. And this is uh, recommended uh, that uh, you uh, scale the learning rate based on the number of GPUs. And then uh, you will need to wrap the optimizers, uh, for example, here is add, add an optimizer with the half on that distributed optimizer with the with uh, with with the uh, distributed optimizer function. And then, sorry. Uh, and then um, you will need to add a few callback. Um, for example, the first one uh, is, is needed for broadcast the variable correctly. The second one is is uh, will be needed if you're calculating some metrics, for example, accuracy um, um, in, 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 the, in your model uh, so that it can be uh, calculated properly. Um, and if you're using model that fit, that's uh, the changes you, you, you need to make. Uh, if you want to uh, use Horophone to do model comparison with PyTorch, here's the example script. So uh, again, the red boxes mark the changes you need to make. So first load the package, uh, sorry, the library. Uh, the, the name will be different. So it will be Horophone.torch. And then first, again, initialize the Horophone session, assign the, the rank to um, devices, and then you will need to use distribute sampler to um, um, divide your data based on the number of uh, GPUs and include the sampler in the uh, data loader. And uh, one um, the detail is that if you are uh, planning to use automatic mixed precision uh, for PyTorch, uh, which are marked in yellow boxes here, uh, if, if you are training with a uh, single position, then you can ignore this. But if, if you are training with uh, automatic mixed precision, you will need to uh, add something additionally when you're uh, updating the optimizer and so that you can um, uh, pro calculate the gradient properly, uh, shown here in the red. Um, but if you are not doing so, you don't need to do anything in the training. Uh, training loop. And then uh, again, you also need to wrap the optimizer with the distributed optimizer function. Okay, so uh, for the run command or Sloan script, uh, here's an example for running TensorFlow with Horophon. So this is uh, useful for uh, running in single node. So you can use uh, Horophon run and then specify the number of GPUs and then Python 3 space the name of your script. And then for example, just uh, use singularity space EXAC uh, for your run command and the send uh, us uh, the intact session. Uh, however, for multiple nodes, I, uh, we will recommend using uh, MPI run uh, as we, as it avoids on issues. So to do so, you will first need to load uh, open a, uh, MPI using module load. And then um, and then you call the MPI run command uh, like this. So this is specifying the total number of uh, GPUs. And then you will need to um, specify, for example, this is, uh, you, you will need to write down the, the actual node name for, for your job. For example, it could be like fee zero five or fee zero seven. So, um, so you there are ways to check it, and then specify the uh, the number of GPUs you want to use for this node. Um, so, for Sloan script, it's um, it's uh, impossible to know which node you will be assigned beforehand. So there are ways to extract a node list from the Sloan command. For example, this one, and then extract. Uh, the node and pass that as a variable to to update this um, the, the the node uh, name in the run command. So we're showing example here in um, in this uh, GitHub repo. Uh, please check that. 
uh, if you're running with an interactive session, then uh, once the uh, session started, you will know which uh, nodes you 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 will uh, you are assigned, and you can check that using a comment like this as well. And then again, first you need to load uh, the Open MPI module, and then using the MPI run comment to uh, run uh, the script. And there are a bunch of flags. Um, they are recommended by uh, Harvon to ensure performance. If you don't include this, uh, the application will run, but the performance will not be as good as um, uh, including those uh, flags. Uh, so for running uh, PyTorch with Harvon, the commands are basically the same. So for single node, you can use Harvon run. Um, and for uh, multiple nodes, yeah, we will recommend using MPI run and, and doing things like this. Okay, so uh, yeah, there are a lot of example scripts and it's impossible to memorize them, but you can, we're sharing some ex examples um, that, uh, that I show in this presentation in this GitHub repo so that you can check those run commands, uh, download the example scripts, uh, and, and run those applications yourself on Bridges2. So it include an example of um, image classification task uh, using ResNet uh, training on ImageNet or dummy data. So uh, you can um, check this uh, GitHub repo uh, to run it yourself. Okay, um, so next I'll talk about uh, some example of district training on Bridges2 uh, and show some um, results and discuss what may affect the performance uh, and show some comparisons of different framework. Um, so here I'm mostly talking about uh, data parallelism. So uh, just, just, just to make sure we're on the same page. Um, and um, you, you will want to include more GPUs, but the fact is not more GPUs are better, and it depends on what your settings are. For example, it depends on the, the size of your model, the data size, batch size, and other uh, parameters. So here I'm, I'm showing some uh, results from running uh, image classification uh, task with ResNet, uh, training with ImageNet, um, actually ImageNet mini data sets uh, using the PyTorch distributed data parallel, and I'm varying a few different things. So this is running using the scripts that I mentioned in that uh, GitHub uh, repo that I, I just show. Um, so here uh, I vary, for example, the batch size, which is the number of batch uh, per GPU or replica, or I vary the image size. For example, I resize the image. So the, the number here showing the number of pixels per side. So you can see that um, on, the, on the Y axis, I'm showing the training throughputs or the number of images it can process per second versus number of GPUs, um, including the run. So you can see the scaling relation and behavior are different with different settings. Um, and on the right, I'm showing results for different model size. For, for example, ResNet 50 has 50 layers and ResNet 18 has uh, fewer layers. So the behavior will be different. Um, so you will need to experiment that yourself for your application to see uh, uh, what, what will be the optimized settings. So um, here I'm showing uh, a PyTorch, uh, the same application, uh, same example, but I'm running that with two different framework. Uh, so uh, again, the scripts uh, I share in the GitHub repo, repo I just uh, mentioned a few slides ago. So again, um, one is uh, one is uh, from running with PyTorch through their parallel API, and the other one is running with Horizon framework. So sorry, 
Um, yeah, so I would like to mention that uh, the distributed data parallel or DP is actually capable of uh, running with multiple nodes, but we have I haven't have that result ready before the webinar. But uh, I will uh, share that um, uh, after the webinar when it is ready. So here I'm running jobs uh, across two to B one hundred thirty two nodes. So um so each node has eight GPUs. So um and I'm I'm varying different uh, image size and batch size. And as as you can see that in this example, um the uh distributed data parallel seems to be performed better than the horophon. Um but uh you, you will need to experiment that yourself to um to see what what could be the uh settings uh optimized setting for your application. And then uh for TensorFlow, um I'm I'm again uh using a very similar example, uh doing an image classification ta uh, classification task with uh ResNet training with ImageNet. Um sorry. So I'm uh showing results using um uh, both mirror strategy and oh, sorry, either mirror strategy or horophon. Um, and for mirror strategy, actually, you can only run on one node. If you want to run with multiple nodes, you will need to use other framework. For example, my work, um, my worker, um, mirror strategy. So, um, again, this is uh, run on either one node or, or across two nodes. So, uh. You can see that in this case, uh, the Horophon framework seems to be performed better than the mirror strategy uh, framework. Um, yeah, so here I'm just trying to put the results together, although they are not exactly apple by apple comparison, but I'm trying to make sure they use the same model size uh, and optimizers, but um, just something to you can do um, for your own application, but this is not benchmark result, just result running. The example script try to compare a similar task. Um, but again, you will need to uh, do it yourself for, for different applications and uh, for your different um, to experiment on different framework. So um, yeah, in this case, uh, it, it seems to be that uh, either the PyTorch distribute their parallelism, uh, parallel uh, API or TensorFlow with, with Horophon is doing better, but um, yeah, the result may vary with different applications. Okay, so yeah, so lastly, um, I will use the list a, a few useful resources and so that you can um, uh, try uh, running some examples or apply what you heard from this webinar to your application. So uh, again, um, you can click on the, the GitHub that uh, where we list the, a few examples that I, I just show. We include a run script and the command um, for running tactic jobs or slow uh, jobs so that you can uh, test that uh, on Bridges too. Okay, I'll, I'll stop here and take questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, May Yu. Uh, there's been some traffic on the uh, on the uh, chat, so uh, uh, like Miguel, Amira, Sagnik, you got what you needed for now. Um, and uh, okay, thank you. And uh, uh, as we said, uh, the recording and the slides will be available in a few days on the uh, on the uh, website. On the uh, website, are there any other questions for Mayu right now? Uh, one small question. I just unmuted myself. Sorry. Uh, uh, is there any sort of like the horror word uh, uh, helps parallelize the process? on multiple GPUs, like uh, uh, Dr. Wang pointed out. Uh, so are there some studies, a paper, which I could see uh, where some alternate approaches have been used and some comparison has been done, just for my own understanding and uh, 
you know, uh, slightly deeper understanding beyond uh, just using them for my purpose, if I just could dig deeper. So are there some publications or something like that which you could point me towards? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't checked it myself, but uh, yeah, so I, I'm not sure. So, but maybe you can find something. I haven't found one um, myself, but yeah, you can check their website and okay. see if, yeah, if they have published something. Okay. Hey, other questions from AU? We have seven minutes. Um, yeah, I think Julia answered most of the question. And yeah, yeah. he's the person that actually helped um, uh, testing and set up the um, the runs and uh, figure out a lot of details. So yeah, it's especially thanks yeah, and, to uh... Julia. I guess maybe another helpful link, and you probably know this already, but any questions uh, as, or problems as you uh, try to run on Bridges 2, you know where to go, right? Help at psc.edu. And then if you describe the problem, uh, the, the better you describe it, the quicker we can help you. And... Uh, uh, yeah, I guess maybe may you do you want to drop like maybe the GitHub link again into the chat or? Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, I can, I can do that. Sorry. Uh, I mm -hmm. I think Julian already shared it. Um, but I can share it again. Like for all your examples. Uh yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, so there's a question. Can we <laughs> bridges to from outside of US? I I think you you can you can do that. Uh, there's well, no, oh, but I don't know if there's any issues for doing so. Much. Well, uh, you know, I think like again in the bridges uh, to user guide, there's a section about getting allocations, and it will tell you, you know, it will direct you uh to access, which is the umbrella program uh, uh, which we use throughout the US for or the National Science Foundation for allocating resources and there you will find uh, essentially the uh, eligibility conditions basically the short answer is that uh, to be a principal investigator on a grant on access and therefore on bridges too uh, uh, you have to be an academic or you have to be based in the U.S. to be a principal investigator. But uh, the principal investigator can collaborate with people outside the U.S. And so uh, and so there's there's certainly quite a few international folks who do get access, but there are rules for doing that. And uh, those are documented. Other questions? So we hope to see you all uh, start using multiple GPUs uh, on uh, Bridges 2. That's why we have them. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for attending today. Thank you very much, May Yu, for your talk. And as I said, uh, check the uh, uh, Bridges to Webinar site uh, in the next few days, and you will see the recording of today's talk and may you slides. And in the interim, you can already start poking around the GitHub repository. And uh, may you write, people could send you email directly, correct? Oh, yeah, that's, that's totally fine. Yeah, I think uh, Sergio shared the email oh if yeah. not i i think emailing help at psc.edu they can uh, direct a question to me so That's as right. well so yeah and you say you know horror about question or whatever and and it'll 
it'll come to the to me or to the right people. Okay, with this, uh, thank you all very much for participating, and uh, see you at our next webinar. Bye.